We are here in one of my favorite areas of Michigan. We're gonna check out the Leland Peninsula and Sleeping Bear Dunes today. My hair one, Scott or the Scott Man, and welcome. It's a beautiful morning out here, and we're gonna be exploring the area around Sleeping Bear Dunes, and of course, check out the Leland Peninsula, which is a very scenic part of the state of Michigan. And as I was saying, it's one of my favorite areas in the entire state. So we'll be exploring many cool areas, including the Grand Traverse Lighthouse and also Glen Arbor, Leland, and of course some cool sites over at the, over at the dunes themselves. But why not start here in the beautiful village of Sutton's Bay? It's about 15 miles north of Traverse City along M22, which is a very scenic highway on its own. And let's go explore the downtown. Sutton's Bay was founded back in 1854 by Harry C. Sutton as it was a great place for a dock to supply steamerships with cordwood for fuel. What's cool about Sutton's Bay is it's got a lot of great shops, restaurants, art galleries, B&Bs, and inns. It is such a great spot to start your adventure in the, in the, Lil in the Lilanau Peninsula. And over here we have the beautiful Bay Theater. It's been open for over 70 years, been putting out a lot of first run films, independent films, even foreign films. And it was set to close permanently back in 2018, but fortunately a nonprofit organization purchased it in 2018 and took things over and it still continues to run today. All right, so let's head over to the, to, 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 to the Marina Park, just over that way. And here we are at the end of the of the walkway, and we get some very very cool views of Grand Traverse Bay. Well, te technically this is Sutton's Bay. It's a part of Grand Traverse Bay, which empties out into Lake Michigan. But what a beautiful community this is! And what's really cool about this overall area too is that there are many vineyards and wineries where you can do a lot of different wine tasting because this is where a lot of the cherries in Michigan are grown. Not only around Sutton's Bay, but close down to the Traverse City area. After all, there is a big cherry festival which happens every July. All right, so we're gonna head back into town, get, get in the car, we're gonna head north up toward Northport and we'll, we'll drive through Northport really quick and then we'll head over to the Grand Traverse Lighthouse. Village of Northport. So it's it's kind of similar to Sun Space. Like you got a nice small village with some different shops and some restaurants in here as well too. So like what's cool is it's like yeah we're technically off M22 now we're on M201 which goes up to the tip of the Leland Peninsula. But nice, yeah, again nice little small village and then of course you got a fishing pier off that way too with a marina. Alright, so let's head up to the lighthouse. And we made it to the tip of the Lelona Peninsula here at Lelona State Park. This is a beautiful park which has over 1,550 acres of parkland, which the, the big attraction here is the Grand Traverse Lighthouse. We'll get there in a second, but there's also a lot of hiking trails, especially in the southern unit, which is separate from, from the main unit here. You also got picnic areas, a playground, and there's also some rustic camping here you can do too. They've got 55 rustic camp campsites, or 55 rustic campsites with three mini cabins. But we're here for the lighthouse, so let's head over there now. The Grand Traverse Lighthouse stands at the very tip of the Leelanau Peninsula. The first lighthouse here was constructed in 1852 after receiving $4,000 in federal funding in 1850. However, a new lighthouse was built in 1858 at the present site after the original could only be seen by ships traveling north and south. In addition, due to fog being a problem at times, a fog signal was constructed nearby in 1899. Finally, in 1972, a steel tower was built with an automated beacon which replaced the lighthouse. 
The lighthouse itself was reopened by the Grand Traverse Lighthouse Foundation in 1987. What a beautiful lighthouse. But yeah, it was really cool to come up all the way to the, to the very tip of the Lelona Peninsula. Get, get to see a beautiful lighthouse and some great views of Lake Michigan. And on a clear day out that way, you can even see Beaver Island. Okay, so it's time to head back down the tip, but this time go along the western side and let's over to Leland next. And welcome to Leland. This is one of the coolest towns here in the Leland on Peninsula of Michigan. A beautiful little downtown area, and then of course you have Fish Town, which is one of the last working and thriving fishing districts in all of the Great Lakes. Before Leland was founded by the Antoine Manceau family in 1853, the area used to be the site of the oldest and largest Ottawa village on the Leland Peninsula. When the Manceau family came, they built a dam at the outlet of the Carp River, which is now the Leland River, and they built a sawmill. Over the years, many schooners and steamers came to the docks here. We are now coming into an iconic part of Leland, Fishtown. Fishtown is one of the last working and thriving fishing districts on the Great Lakes. It has everything from fishing shanties and smokehouses to docks, fishing boats, and of course, different shops. Yep, what a cool historic district here. Just gotta love Fishtown. And while we're here in Fishtown, we gotta get some delicious food. One of my favorite places in all the Leland Peninsula for food is the Village Cheese Shanty. You get some great sandwiches, and you can also buy some, uh, some of their cheese too if you like. So let's order a sandwich and enjoy some great food. All right, yeah, it is such a beautiful day. It's great just to eat outside and have some great food. So I got their orchard wraps, got chicken, looks like some tomatoes, spin some spinach, and of course some brie as well too. Because you have to have some cheese on your sandwich when you get something from the Village Cheese Shanty after all. So I'm gonna go ahead and take out some of this wrapping here. No pun intended. <laughs> All right, let's dig in. Mmm. Mmm. This is rich and delicious. Half full of flavor. Tomatoes taste very fresh too. I'm not normally a tomato person on sandwiches, but when their tomatoes are this good, you have to have them. Mm -mm -mm. That was one good wrap. But one thing I forgot to mention is that the wrap also had dried cherries and cherry vinaigrette dressing in it. It's like when you're here in the Lilan Peninsula, you have to have something with cherries in it. Mm -mm -mm. But one cool thing about Leland too is that if you're looking to go to the Manitou Islands, which are the two islands that are off to the west of here, away from the Sleeping Bear Dunes area, you, you can take the ferry from here in Leland and he head over to either North or South Manitou Islands. But not only that too, but there's also a really cool museum or a historical museum we have to check out here in Leland too, so let's head over there now. Let's head inside the Leland All Historical Society Museum. The museum has a lot of great exhibits which highlight more about the great history of not only Leland, but the entire area around the Leland All Peninsula. Make sure to stop in and pay them a visit. It's a, it's a pretty cool museum. It's, it's a great way to learn more about the great history of the of the whole Lilonal area. All right, so let's continue our way down N22 and head over toward Glen Haven or Glen Arbor and also the historic village of Glen Haven and then go over to Sleeping Bear Dunes. About a 20 minute or so drive southwest of Leland, we've made it to Glen Arbor. We're right on the footsteps of the Sleeping Bear Dunes National Lakeshore. But before we go over to the lakeshore itself, we have to explore the beautiful town of Glen Arbor. The area where Glen Arbor is today was once inhabited by the Ottawa, the Chippewa, and the Potawatomi tribes. 
They used the land for fishing, hunting, and farming. French fur traders came here in the 1800s, and then later a permanent settlement came in in 1847 as a trading post was established at the mouth of the Crystal River. The wife of one of the early settlers named it Glen Arbor due to all the trees covered in grapevines. Today, as you can see, there are a lot of great shops and a lot of restaurants. Glen Arbor is quite a beautiful community. And head north on Lake Street, you come over to Lake Michigan. And over here, you can, you can see both South Manitou Island and North Manitou Island. But yeah, it's really nice to see how blue the water is, too. And out that way, too, you can see the part of the Sleeping Bear Dunes. But before we get over there, there is a particular republic we, we need to visit while we're here. And we made it over to the Cherry Republic. This republic was established back in 1989 by Bob Sutherland. Let's go, let's go explore this republic. Cherry Republic was started in 1989 by Bob Sutherland. It all started with him selling t-shirts saying life, liberty, beaches, and pie out of his car and then later earning money from selling cherry inspired cookies called the original Cherry Boom Chunka. The Great Hall is where you can go in and buy many great cherry products. The winery is where you can enjoy some cherry wine, and the Cherry Public House is where you can have some great food. There is also an Olympic-sized pit spitting arena. I'm curious, how far can you spit out a cherry pit? Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's like they got everything from cherry salsas to, to chocolate-covered cherries, and of course I had to get some just traditional Montmorency dried cherries. Those would be great to put on a salad. But what's cool is that there are many Cherry Republics all around the state of Michigan. This is the original location. There's one in Traverse City. There's even one down in Frankenmuth and in Ann Arbor. All right, so we're gonna head just a few miles to the west, head over to Gl the historic Glen Haven. Glen Haven is a small village which showed what villages were like back when the steamers docked here to fuel up. Over here is the Cannery Boathouse. This was first built as a warehouse and then as a cannery for cherries in the early 1920s. All right, so we only just barely scratched the surface here in the Sleeping Bear Dunes. So let's go to probably the, I think one of the most famous parts of the National Lakeshore, the dune climb. And here we are at the dune climb. This is one of the most famous parts of the Sleeping Bear Dunes National Lakeshore. It is a very strenuous climb up to the top, but once you get up to the top, we get some spectacular views of the whole dunes, and of course, looking back that way, seeing Glen Lake. So, wish me luck. <sighs> what a hike. But over here, it's like we're at some of the tallest parts of the whole dune climb area and <clears throat> get some spectacular views of Lake Michigan and also South Manitou Island. But yeah, you can you can actually go all the way to Lake Michigan if you want to. It's about 1.8 miles from the parking area all the way to the lake, but there you have to go over several sand dunes there and then back. So if you do go all the way to the lake and hike all the way back to the parking lot, good luck. <laughs> but yeah, this is as far as I'm gonna go, but get some really cool views here. So we're gonna head back, and then we're gonna head over to the Pier Stocking Drive for some more cool views of the dunes. Welcome to the Pier Stocking Drive. This is another one of the top highlights here at the Sleeping Bear Dunes National Lakeshore. 
We're just a few miles to the south of the dune climb and throughout the park it's like you got a nice scenic drive that's over seven miles long and there's a couple very cool viewpoints which we'll see. One's gonna be of Glen Lake and then the other is gonna be over at Lake Michigan. We're on or we'll, we'll be about 400, 450 feet above the lake. Just look how cool this spot is. Get amazing views of Lake Michigan. You can see all the dunes all on the shoreline. And if you really, really want to, you can you can walk all the way down to the bottom of the dune, down to Lake Michigan. But the only problem is you have to climb 450 feet up a very tall sand dune. This is one of the highest points in the Sleeping Bear Dune. So. Good luck if you decide to do that. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna head down to Empire and we're gonna get ready to start concluding the video. Hey, last but not least, we've made it to the village of Empire. Not really a whole lot to the, to the town area, but you do have the main visitor center for the Sleeping Bear Dunes located in Empire. There's also a couple of restaurants in town too. But you got this nice little small beach area right along Lake Michigan. And you can see some of the sand dunes from over here too. But figure we'll go ahead and we'll conclude the video here. But the last view though, I'm gonna head down to the Platte River where the Platte River empties out into Lake Michigan. That's where I'll conclude the video with like the, with the with the closing, or I should say with the, with the ending to the video. Because yeah, over down there you, you got, down the Platte River, it's technically not on the, the Leelanau Peninsula anymore, it's down in Benzie County. But the Platte River, it's like you got it's a nice river you can go canoeing or kayaking or tubing and go all the way to Lake, to where it empties down to Lake Michigan. All right, so yeah, hope you enjoyed this video here in the in the Leelanau Peninsula and the Sleeping Bear Dunes. We've, we've gone to so many cool things here today. I've had such a great time today. And off camera is really fun running down those sand dunes. <laughs> All right, so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to click that subscribe button to uh, come on and uh, join for the venture. And uh, don't forget to click that notification bell so that way you know when a new video goes live. Well, thank you for watching, and this is Scott, or the Scott Man, signing out here from Lake Michigan. Mm -hmm.